as a scientist working on Alzheimer's disease for many years, it's fantastic that our years of fundamental neuroscience research have finally resulted in a treatment that can affect the disease process. So this drug, which I was not involved in, can slow the progression of Alzheimer's disease, like you mentioned, by about 27%. And it can reverse some of the pathological changes in the brain, that sticky amyloid is being cleared from the brain. Well, yes, and, and explain to us in basic terms what Alzheimer's does to the brain and how does this drug combat that? So Alzheimer's disease is the most common cause of dementia. Dementia is the symptoms that your viewers are probably all very aware of, this devastating loss of mental function. Uh, and Alzheimer's disease is caused by a very slow buildup of two sticky proteins in the brain. One is amyloid that builds up for decades before you even have symptoms. And the other is tau that clumps up inside your brain cells and spreads through the brain as your symptoms progress. And this drug targets the amyloid, which is a very early uh, part of the disease process. And that's why the trial was run in people in the early stages of disease. What the drug is, is an antibody that's infused in your bloodstream every two weeks, and it binds up that sticky amyloid peptide and brings it out of the brain. And that allows some, some recovery of, of brain function, or at least slowing of the progression of cognitive decline. Well, yes. And so, as you were implying there, the drugs have to be given early in the uh, early on since diagnosis of Alzheimer's. So does that present challenges in making sure that people are diagnosed early? How difficult is that? Yes, because you have brain changes for many years before you have any symptoms, it's very difficult to know exactly who's in the early stages of disease. But we're getting better and better at understanding who these people are by tests like brain scans and uh, uh, cerebrospinal fluid, so spinal fluid markers, and even there are promising blood tests. But it's a little bit tricky because this amyloid builds up not only in people in the early stages of Alzheimer's disease, but in some of us who are healthy and undergoing normal aging, but not on the way to Alzheimer's disease. So this trial picked people who were in the early stages had symptoms and had this amyloid in their brains. So clearly um, great progress is being made, but what hope is there that this could lead us on to, to diagnosing and treating later stages of, of Alzheimer's and perhaps slowing it down even faster than this drug is doing so far? Well, exactly. I'm very optimistic. We have a lot of hope. So this particular drug hasn't been tested yet in people in later stages of the disease, and it, it will be tested. So people will, will know whether it's going to work at later stages. But what else this does is it opens the door for more funding. Historically, Alzheimer's disease and dementia research has received much less funding than things like cancer research. But now that we have this proof of principle that there can be a drug that gets into the brain and slows disease progression, what the hope is, is that will bring more investment so that people like us in the lab can keep doing our work in the brain. And there are targets coming through in clinical trials that are very exciting. So not just targeting this early amyloid, but targeting that later tau protein. There are drugs that are being tested for that now. There are drugs that are being tested to look at how we could affect the brain's immune system to stop its negative effects and the early effects on Alzheimer's disease. So it is very, very hopeful that this is just the beginning of the end, as I've heard people call it today. So lots is very positive. How soon might this drug get rolled out? That's hard to know. So I'm not on the committees that decide these sort of things. I'm not a medical doctor. I'm a fundamental scientist. My understanding is this could be approved for use in the United States fairly quickly. I think it will take longer if it is approved in the UK because it does have side effects. So something that the authors were very clear about in the paper about the trial is that compared to the placebo, there were more side effects in people taking the drug. So people who have to make the decisions about whether this will be available on the NHS will have to balance that risk versus benefit type profile. OK, it'll be fascinating to see how that, that pans out. But Professor Tara Spires-Jones, really lovely to talk to you about such a, a positive, positive development. Thanks very much indeed. Thank you.